Peace. Abracadabra. This is Chakra Zulu. And this segment is going to be called the Osar Chronicles. I may change the title of it later. I don't know. But the reason why I want to title it that is because I want to go into a series of dissertations discussing the symbolic castration of the black man in America. Now, before I get into that, I have to get into the literal castration of Osar. Uh, anybody who's up on their uh, Egyptian text and their Egyptian theology knows that Osar, who the Greco-Romans like to call Osiris, um, was the first uh, god to have tasted death, being as he was a god on earth and whatnot. Uh, being in the physical form, he was subject to that. Uh, in the Bible, uh, his story is likened to Cain and Abel, uh, being as how he was murdered by his brother Seth, uh, due to jealousy, no more, no less. And um, what happened was the story that stuck to me was how uh, Seth threw a party, uh, invited a bunch of people, uh, made Osar his brother, the guest of honor. Uh, Osar got there, they're partying hard, they're partying like rock stars, you know, they get crazy wasted, and uh, they start playing these games where uh, they're showing feats of strength, in which in which case Osar won every time. They're souping him up, right? And so, then the final game that they play, uh, they got this uh, coffin, uh, which is pretty much the, the prototypical sarcophagus uh, um, much like the ones you see in ancient Egypt today uh, I say the ancient Egypt today what I mean is they, they're they from ancient Egypt but you still see them today excuse me and they um, the winner of the contest had to be able to fit into this sarcophagus exactly in measurement height, weight, uh, uh, length, everything so nobody could fit in it you know, Seth had like 72 of his cohorts who tried to fit in and nobody could. And they let Osar go last. And when they saw that he was a perfect fit, they shut the casket on him and they soldered it shut. And they sent it uh, up the Nile River, you know, to get rid of him and to for Seth to usurp the throne. You know, another familiar story that was derived from this is the... Uh, all-time Shakespearean favorite Hamlet, uh, even though Shakespeare uh, plagiarized it from Amelia Bassano, and I'm constantly throwing that in certain uh, lectures and dissertations and videos and whatnot, and I'll break that down later. Um, in any case, what happened was uh, his wife, uh, also his wife, Osset, who's referred to as Isis, um, went after him. Uh, found the coffin and when she tried to rescue him set ambushed her uh, took uh, Osar shredded him and because his strength was diminished by this time shredded him into 14 pieces scattered him along the Nile River and made sure that uh, his phallus wasn't to be found again he threw it so far down the river that the uh, fish by the name of Oxyrhynchus uh, grabbed it up and swallowed it. And they say that their fish swallowing it is um, a metaphor of the age of Pisces that we're just not coming out of. Okay, so when Arset recovered all of the pieces, she couldn't find the phallus. So she fashioned one out of gold, where, where the term goldenrod comes from. Um, she uh, made love to Arsar, resurrected him uh, just, just long enough to be able to procreate and... Uh, you know, bring forth a redeemer uh, who uh, is Heru or the, who the Greeks call Horus. And, uh, of course, you know, Heru is supposed to come out in the in fashion of Hamlet and, uh, you know, take down Set and redeem his father's name. So I'm going to cut it off here because I don't want these videos to be too long. Again, this is going to be a series of segments. I just wanted to give you the history on Osar and why... I'm saying that this is a, 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 a castration symbolically uh, for the black man. So stay tuned for part two. Peace.